What is carbon buildup and how to avoid it? Carbon buildup in your engine. What causes it and how to stop it before it wrecks your ride? Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If your car's been feeling a little rough lately, maybe it's idling weird, eating up more fuel, or just hot, not pulling like it used to, you might be dealing with one of the most annoying and sneaky issues out there. Carbon buildup inside your engine. Yup. This stuff creeps in over time and can seriously mess with your performance if you don't catch it early. So today I'm going to walk you through what carbon deposits actually are, how they form, what kind of damage they can do, and most importantly, how to prevent them before they turn into a massive repair bill. And hey, while you're here, if you're noticing other strange behaviors from your car, check out this video on symptoms of a bad vapor canister purge valve, especially if you're smelling fuel or dealing with random check engine lights. Links in the description. Now let's get into it. What is carbon buildup and why should you care? So what are we even talking about here? Carbon deposits, sometimes called carbon fouling, are basically just leftovers from fuel that didn't burn all the way. And it's not just a diesel thing. Gasoline engines, especially modern ones with direct injection and turbos, are also prime targets. Where do these deposits hang out? Intake valves, fuel injectors, piston tops, throttle bodies, turbo blades, even the catalytic converter and DPF. And once this gunk builds up, you'll start noticing things like hesitation, rough idle, hard starts, and just a general loss of power. How does it start? There are a bunch of reasons carbon builds up. Let's run through the most common ones. Incomplete combustion. This one's a biggie. Your engine's supposed to burn fuel cleanly. Carbon dioxide, water vapor, done. But if the air fuel mix is off, or if your injectors are dirty, that fuel doesn't fully burn, and guess what? Sticky leftovers. Driving style and conditions. Short trips, stop and go traffic, idling a lot. These keep your engine from getting hot enough to burn off residue. Sound like your daily commute? <laughs> That's a carbon paradise. And if you drive super aggressively, constantly flooring it or braking hard, that also stresses the engine and can throw things out of balance. Poor fuel quality. Cheaper fuel usually means more impurities and fewer detergents. That stuff doesn't burn clean and leaves more carbon behind. Even top-tier fuels won't save your intake valves and direct injection cars since the fuel doesn't touch them. Failing parts that let gunk in. Leaky PCV valve, faulty EGR system, oil slipping past worn piston rings. All of those can dump oily vapors or soot into the intake, and once that stuff mixes with heat, you've got a sticky situation. Direct injection engine design. Here's the trade-off. Direct injection is great for power and efficiency, but it skips over the intake valves, so they never get washed by fuel. So all those oil vapors from the PCV system, they settle on the valves like grime on a shower wall. What it does to your car and why you shouldn't ignore it. Now for the part that hurts, what carbon buildup actually does. Performance drops. You'll feel it. Cold starts become shaky. Acceleration gets lazy. Idle turns rough. The car just won't feel as responsive. Misfires, not uncommon. Fuel economy tanks. Clogged injectors and restricted airflow force your engine to work harder, and that means you're visiting the gas station more often than you'd like. Higher emissions. More unburned fuel, and more pollution. For diesels, this often means DPF blockages, black smoke, or failed emissions tests. Potential engine damage. If left unchecked, carbon deposits can cause piston rings to lose seal, turbo blades to clog, intake valves to stick or misfire. And when that happens, you're looking at serious repairs. Speaking of internal engine issues, check out our video on signs and symptoms of low transmission fluid. Some of those transmission problems can feel a lot like engine hesitation. How to prevent carbon buildup, let's talk solutions. Stick to routine maintenance. Change your oil on time. Replace filters. Clean your injectors. Check your PCV and EGR systems. Keep an eye on your turbo if you've got one. Use quality fuel. Low sulfur, high detergent fuel is best. Avoid off-brand stations or old stock fuel. Add fuel additives occasionally. Stuff like BG44K, Tecron, or Milex diesel additive can help clean injectors and reduce carbon buildup, especially if used regularly. Drive smart. Get the engine fully warmed up. Mix in some longer highway drives. Avoid excessive idling. Don't shut off turbo engines right after a hard run. 
Let them idle a bit. Consider a professional carbon clean. If things have already gotten bad, a carbon clean might be your best bet. Options include chemical intake cleaning, walnut shell blasting, engine flushes. It might run you $300 to $900, but it's still cheaper than replacing a turbo or cylinder head. DIY cleaning, if you know what you're doing. You can try cleaners like CRC intake valve cleaner or Seafoam, but follow instructions carefully. Do it wrong, and you can mess up sensors or hydrolock the engine. Wrap up. All right, so now you know. Carbon buildup is one of those things that starts small but turns into a nightmare if ignored. Thankfully, with a little maintenance and some smart habits, it's something you can absolutely keep under control. And if you're hearing weird sounds, clicks, whines, rattles, and wondering if it's carbon, bearings, or worse, check out our video on six car noises you should never ignore. Links in the description. If your car's talking, it's saying something for a reason. If this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what topic you want to see next. Catch you in the next one.